Hey, it's Brian from Team Aquascape, and this week I'm going to take you through all the things that we've been doing here around the building. So I want to take you around Aqualand, show you all the things that we've been doing this place to get it ready for our big season. So you thought we'd just clean ponds for all of you guys out there, everybody that we built ponds for. Well, of course, here at Aqualand, we have several ponds we have to clean ourselves. And this is one of them. This is the first pond that everybody sees as soon as they come into the entrance of Aquascape. It's a really, really cool pond. In fact, it's the first pond that was ever built at this facility. We actually built it before the building was even finished. Ed and I snuck out here and did this and we make sure we take care of it. We still have some more landscape to do. We have to come in here and water a lot of things on a regular basis because it's covered by the, the roof over here. One of my favorite things that's happening right now is something that I've dreamt of happening for a long time and it's that our coffee tree is now up and through the roof over here. But with that big tree, it does drop a lot of leaves. And so the guys came in here and cleaned this. We cleaned other features. We cleaned our big lily trough that's sitting behind you guys <laughs> back over there. And we even came out into our retail space and did some work out over here. Let's check this out. So this used to be where we retail over our fish. Now we just retail aquatic plants. It also gives our potential customers and all the people that visit Aqualand, a great place to just kind of view our big signature pond. This is our huge, huge rec pond. I'm walking on new turf. We had to redo all of this artificial turf here because of that maple tree has some <laughs> giant roots that had caused this thing to be all wavy. So we cut up those roots, we got rid of those guys, we came in here, put some new turf down. We even put a small little seating area out here, just big enough for a couple chairs, a little table, and a place to view these koi. And then Jack and Connor came out here and set in some new big rocks. I call these destination rocks, the kind of rocks that invite you to walk right up on them. This is of course where everybody's gonna feed the fish. So they can sit over there, they can come here, and you can tell these guys are used to me because anytime somebody comes to the destination rock, all the fish come right up to us. Let's see if we can find them some food. These are definitely our pets, and they're really everybody's pets because anybody that comes over here can feed these fish. And look at just how hungry they are. Are you, you ready to see colorful piranha? <laughs> That's what I call them. So the turf was something we had to do. Like I said, those maple tree roots were really just becoming a trip hazard for everybody because they were coming up a good eight to 10 inches higher than the original turf. So it was an easy task for Jack and the boys to come out here, rip the old turf off, come in here, strategically cut some roots without having to damage the old tree, then get everything prepped and ready for the turf guys to come in here and put down the new turf. And we said, while they're doing that, why don't we spice it up a little bit so it doesn't come back the exact same way. So we added this little patio and this is all this leftover brick we had at the building. It wasn't enough material to do a giant patio but just enough material to do this patio. And I love the way it turned out. More importantly, I love giving people the opportunity to be able to sit down and just look at this pond. In a short amount of time, this thing gets covered with water lilies. Literally, 70% of the surface in here is covered with water lilies, all different flowers, all different types. This year is gonna be more magical than ever because we have so many new varieties coming in. But I can't wait to show you guys that later, probably another month or so before all those things are up and ready. While we were doing this, we're also prepping this area. Now we still sell some fish out here. We sell all of our Japanese imported koi inside through more of an experience inside. But for those people that don't want the koi and the big expense of the koi, we still sell goldfish and snails and shabunkins. And so those fish are sitting out here. And you can see these tanks are already stocked. What I love about shabunkin, they still have a lot of the same qualities of a koi, but never get quite the size of a koi. So they're gonna max out somewhere in that eight to 10 inch range. And that's a pretty big shabunkin. But if we look down in here, they still have lots of cool colors, fancy fins, tadpoles and trapdoor snails in this one. I see some comments over in here, and then Paul's getting uh, the rest of our fountain features up over here. It looks like we have to update some of the signage, and we'll get this place all pretty, get some more plants and everything else. Sooner than later, this place is gonna look amazing. There's so many things I wanna do here, and one of the things we did a few years ago was build this lily trough. We realized that the retail space we had for selling lilies was very minimal, and so many people come here to get their aquatic plants, 
because it's really the only place around the Chicagoland suburbs that has such a huge variety of plants. So this lily trough, just like all of our other features, needs to be cleaned and maintained. So we came in here, drained this guy out, got all the lilies repotted. You can see some of the lilies are actually starting to sprout up here just a little bit. That water temperature is probably still in its mid to upper 50s, so we won't see these things come to the surface for maybe another two weeks or so. But we had to get this whole thing cleaned up and ready. As we do that, we also come in and trim some of our bushes and stuff. We landscape the backside of this to really block off all the cattails that were down on the backside. And one of the things I'm most excited about in the plant side of things is this weeping willow. I planted that weeping willow probably three years ago at about a three foot height. And it's really starting to love life over here. So eventually that thing's gonna cascade out over everything. Weeping willows are one of my favorite trees as long as it's here at Aqualand because it's a little messy, but they're super beautiful. Um, I would never want it in my own yard, but over here at Aqualand, it's a perfect, perfect tree. So just after they finished cleaning the lily trough, of course, we jumped over here to our negative edge. This negative edge has hundreds of thousands of gallons of water coming over the top of it. And with that, it pulls a lot of debris, in fact, all of the debris off the surface of that upper pond and brings it down into here, where eventually it starts clogging up the intake base. So the guys have to come in here, scoop out a lot of that garbage, get all of that stuff out of here, and it takes quite a bit of time. They come in, power wash all the rocks down, split and divide some of the plants, and really focus on getting all the algae and leaves and grass clippings and helicopter seeds out of the joints of all the rock and gravel, allowing water to get down into our pump. You can also see as we've been walking around and you've seen all these pretty pictures, a lot of tulips. Another project we put a lot of time in was last fall planting a bunch of bulbs for spring flowers. So we planted a bunch of daffodils, a bunch of tulips, and the allium is about to start blooming. Every fall, we make sure we discipline ourselves to plant another 100 to 500 new bulbs. So every year, this place looks more and more and more magical. Of course, the second they finish cleaning all this and getting it all done, and we have all the guys here to get this done, about a week later, our pump goes out, right when we don't have anybody to do it. So we had to bring a couple guys back and replace our pump. Now, replacing the pump is actually quite a big deal, especially when you're talking about a pump this size and big enough to handle that size pond. So we have to bring equipment in, we have to remove concrete lids. You can see all the cobbles that go back over the concrete lid to make that look nice. It's not an easy thing, but it's something that doesn't happen that often. In fact, I don't think we've ever replaced the pump. That means that pump went for 17 years, which ran pretty is a pretty good life expectancy for a pump. So replacing a pump and putting that type of work into the pump side of things once every 17 years isn't that bad. And now we've got a brand new pump and it should go for another 17 more. So by far the biggest project that was handled outside of the Aquascape building this year are these wetlands. Now this was something I was actually thankful I didn't have to have any part of. Jack and Ed came out here, basically spearhead this thing. They had Greg Gill from Iowa Landscape out here too. They came in here and replaced all of the rock and gravel in here. They dug down what looked to be about down about 18 inches and just pulled out so much loamy junk. And the reason there was so much garbage in there is Phragmites had actually encroached into our wetland and took over the entire thing. Then we killed off the Phragmites, but left behind a lot of the root structure. So that stuff slowly started decaying and causing a problem. The top eight to 10 inch of this thing was totally covered in roots and we needed to allow water to move back up through the wetlands freely. Jack and Ed came out here, scraped all that stuff, got all the Phragmites out of here, put in new rock and gravel, and we're ready to replant this thing. And I believe we have Holt Nursery coming out here with an enormous amount of plants, and we're gonna plant this entire thing up and get this thing running the way we've always intended it to run. Same thing, not bad if we only have to do it once every 17 years. That was the biggest cleaning we've ever done on our wetland. And not one wetland, but two wetlands. There was a second one over here. So this is the second wetland, a little bit bigger than the other one, but they couldn't clean this entire one because when we planted this one 17 years ago, we actually planted bald cypresses directly into the wetland, knowing that it would be quite the experiment. Bald cypresses, as you know, love, love water. So they are loving life inside of our wetland. And you can see 
all the little cypress knees that are popping up all over the place. That's the way the cypress tree actually gets its oxygen. It starts sending its roots back above water level, or above the ground level. So those things are all over the place. We knew if we came into the wetland area too far, we would be disrupting the root system of these. What we think, what we found so amazing, after talking with Ed and Jack, the cypress tree roots weren't actually migrating throughout the entire thing. They were kind of confined just to this end. I was really expecting to hear, once they started digging this out, for cypress tree roots to be running amongst all of this rock and gravel. And they really weren't, which was great because we can leave these things. And they look so beautiful in the summer when they're totally leafed out. So they got this wetland up and running too. We should have this pond crystal, crystal clear this summer with both wetlands now supercharged with brand new bacteria seeding rock and gravel. I'm on the back side of our big signature waterfall. That's the, the 10 foot high waterfall that falls towards the building. For years, Ed and I have always talked about what can we do with the space on the opposite side of this drive over here. This looks so beautiful with the tiger eyed sumac, the trees, the red buds. When you come around the corner like these guys have though, you look at this berm over here and it kind of goes wah, wah, wah. It's just not that pretty. And so like I was saying, years and years ago, I think since the second we put this in, we, Ed and I, put this in, we've always said, wouldn't it be great to duplicate this look right over here? So for Pondemonium this year, with the help of a bunch of other certified Aquascape contractors, we're gonna build this berm up and add about 100 tons of stone in here with all kinds of trees and ferns, and more importantly, make it look like that weepy wall. And if you guys, you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've ever driven through the mountains and you've seen like a little spring just kind of coming out of the crack of a rock cliff or something. So that's what we want this to look like. I literally want it to look like Aquascape came through here, cut a road in between a mountain. So we've got this big rock wall over here. We're gonna duplicate that over here and block off that airport and that busy, busy road over there. So when people pull in, they really feel like they're in a different world. So the last spot is our aqua gardens. And this is a place that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I love this space back here such an awesome place because it has replicatable water features that you yourself could do in your own yard. And of course this place takes a little bit of maintenance too. And it's not necessarily the water features, it's all the landscape. So you can see everything's just finished flowering. Pretty soon there's some big Japanese lilac back there. They're gonna throw off a bunch of flowers. Well all those flower petals land on the ground and we gotta get that stuff cleaned up. So we gotta come through here with blowers, we've gotta weed, we gotta do all that kind of stuff to make sure that the grounds, the landscape, makes our water features look that good. And so most of this stuff we don't have to do a lot to because we leave it running all winter. This is one of my favorite waterfalls ever. It's just a super simple little twisty turny waterfall. It's only built out of like six rocks. I just love this thing so much. I love the basalt columns over here. I love the weeping Alaskan cedars. Um, there's always room for improvement though and in fact last year we wanted to do this and I didn't we ran out of time kind of like we did this year and I really want to do another feature back here so hopefully we find time to get this done before some of our big events which I'm going to talk about in a second but back in here we don't have anything and so what I really 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 want to do and it's more from the inspiration of the thing I was talking about over there on the back side of the berm that weepy waterfall thing is create a mini version of that right in here. So I wanna pull these giant boulders out of here, put dig some stuff out and get little waterfalls dropping in between the joints here and then do the same thing on this side. I wanna get giant massive boulders in here and have little trickly waterfalls dropping down and have a bridge over this whole space, which would just look so cool. It's just finding the time to do it all. The ideas are always there it's trying to put the ideas into a schedule that makes sure it works for everybody else. Why do we do all this stuff, you ask? We do it because we have so many different events going on this year. Uh, pretty soon we have our spring sale event, uh, which is available for the first time online. That's, uh, I believe, May 18th and 19th. Uh, we have Laura from Garden Answers and Kevin from Epic Gardening coming out to our July pond tour. 
Speaking of pond tours, we have three pond tours this year. We have one in the third week of July, one in the third week of August, and one in the third week of September. So past customers of ours open up their backyards and allow people to walk around their backyards to get inspiration and ideas and hopefully be motivated and encouraged to live that aquascape lifestyle. We have Pondemonium here this year. We've got to make sure that this place is like at its top. And so we're putting everything we can into making sure this place is beautiful. If you're ever in the Chicagoland area, make sure you stop by Aqualand. Come visit us, check out the grounds. The place is incredible and we look forward to seeing you. Hey, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you soon. Bye.